frankly, it was a God's miracle that we moved the mountain enough to be able to be functional this year. We had 452 young men and women from 32 states and seven countries come to the Commonwealth of Kentucky and learn the basics of military life. All of our young people must be crime-free, drug-free, doing well in school. They have to want to be there. Our core's motto is hardcore out the door. If you don't want to be here, go home. So we don't deal with delinquents. Okay, I figured y'all like that. Same way. Okay. Okay. We're, we're not a dumping ground for those that are incorrigible. Okay, I get parents all the time. Well, my son's disrespectful and he's a jerk and he hangs out at night. Can I send him to you? I'm like, lady, what do I want him for? Okay, no, you raise him. Yeah, spawn. Okay, not mine. So we we've, we've got pretty well a, a black and white. You know, either you live up to the expectations or you go home kind of attitude. And you'll see that in the young men and women that are part of our program. Uh, we're very, very proud. Those of us that wear the uniform, many of us are retirees and veterans that continue to serve. Uh, I'm not on active duty. I don't draw a check for this. In my civilian life, I, I'm a consultant. But I started, like many of you, as a cadet 30 plus years ago. It had a profound impact on my life. It made me the man I am today. And um, you know, if it weren't for the opportunities that we all had earlier in our lives, I, I couldn't imagine where I'd be at this juncture in my life. Um, on the horizon, we've had a, a very long summer. Uh, the plant has served us well, and we've rebuilt, for those of you that are familiar with the, the, the construct of, of the historic campus, uh, we've completely revamped the dining facility, we've completely revamped uh, the basement, which was the library, is now uh, ACES, the Army Cadet Exchange Service. And for those that uh, uh, I'd like to put out a standing invite. If you'd like to come out and see the place, you come see me. Okay, I'll walk you around. And we've gathered some EMI specific items that are down in the, uh, in the exchange. And um, for those again that are familiar, the back end of McIntyre and Rankin. Rankin for years we were told, uh, evidently, you know, just need to be torn down. And, and we were told outright we need to have $50,000 to, uh, you know, demo it and haul it away. We've saved that building. And we've gone through state inspection. Uh, we're still trying to raise the money to, uh, to finish the project, but uh, we saved that building. Um, so the exciting things on the horizon, again, we're working with the Kentucky State Police to possibly host some training for them out there, the National Honor Guard Academy. And as of just a week ago, we are confirmed for the second and third week of August, I believe it is, we're going to have 45 officers and cadets from the United Kingdom come to beautiful town down, downtown Millersburg to learn a little bit about our great nation. And I'll close with this. Unfortunately, a lot of folks in, in the globe view America as being what they see on Law and Order and CSI and such as that. So they think our country is New York City and Miami mm -hmm. and Chicago and Los Angeles. The reality is the vast majority of our great nation is just like Millersburg, Kentucky. So I can't think of a better place to call home. I couldn't be any more proud to be part of the Commonwealth. I couldn't be a luckier man than to have this young lady sitting beside me. So thank you, Kentucky, for welcoming me here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you. Colonel, Colonel Lamb, yes, I think sir. there's some questions. I had one for the Brits that are coming over uh, to Millersburg. Will Bridget's Kitchen uh, suffice as a pub for those guys? <laughs> well, sadly, <laughs> I, I have good news and bad news. Okay. Um, Bridges Kitchen is no more, is, oh, it, it, no. whether you know that or not. But there is, through the uh, Millersburg Pride organization and the historic renovation, I'm, I, I, know, I know I'm using the wrong terms here, but there's a, a historic renovation society that evidently is helping to uh, bring that block of buildings back to life. And the Cadet Inn and the Cadet Restaurant are actually being resurrected. Uh, we are working with them to make sure that there's proper, you know, um, decorations for the wall and, and a, a, a visual capturing of cadetting of cadetting as a whole and I say this with all respect we're not Millersburg Military Institute we're an entirely different organization we've worked very diligently to protect and preserve the history of MMI because if we don't collectively do that it's going to go away and I've worked very hard with uh, with uh, David and Tom and some of the others to uh, really formalize the Millersburg Military Institute Alumni Association because you know that heritage can't just dissolve. Um, with that said, we as the National Cadet Training Center host training programs for all types of cadets. In our parade of cadets, we had Sea Cadets, Civil Air Patrol, Young Marines, Junior ROTC, all types of cadetting. So I think you'll find that the Cadet Inn will be dedicated to 
not just the history of MMI, but also cadeting as a whole. And we're working with them to, you know, have the, you know, the pictures and the other decorations to, to capture that. That will be operational by the time the Brits get here. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to be part of that. It's the, the Town Square area, again, if you haven't been there in a while, you know, things have kind of gone down and we are, you know, kind of seeing it come back to life. We've had a new restaurant come in, um, real estate starting to sell. And, um, you know, we're told, and, and I say this with all humility, but we're told that we've had a, that positive impact to kind of give a jump start to the town of Millersburg. And I couldn't be any more proud if that's the case. That's yes, sir. And how, how is the, Colonel Lamb, how is the <coughs> school funded? I mean, obviously takes a vast you know, budget to, to run such yeah. an uh, organization. Absolutely. How uh, is the funding? Uh, Other than donations. Yeah, which yes, pass that on. It's strictly. No, no, just disregarding my question. We've been there before. Okay. Um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. Okay. Um, we do very well at squeezing a nickel until it becomes a $10 bill. Uh, we have put in probably well over a million dollars worth of improvements into the facility with a total investment of about $450. Uh, the reason being, we make maximum utilization of uh, guests to the governor by way of the Bourbon County Correction System. Uh, we have volunteers that come in. We have a lot of talent from within our internal ranks. And answering your question a little bit more point blank, donations, summer training programs, the camps that we run, you know, provide a, a uh, well, of course, we're a nonprofit, but provide a profit for the, for the corporation in order to keep it uh, afloat. And that's essentially you know, what moves us along. We are not federally funded. We're not currently uh, funded through the Commonwealth. And um, we're still making it happen. So you have tuitions? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? Colonel, thank you very much for gracing us with your presence today and your presentation and bringing your lady with you. Well, let me share with you finally. Um, and I didn't get this girlish figure about not eating, so I'm going to join you for lunch. Okay. Yes. Um, let me tell you that uh, all too often when we think of teenagers these days, we are kind of forced with this image that we get from television and from, you know, kind of things we hear, you know, uh, or we read in the newspapers of, you know, kids with, uh, you know, with droopy jeans and long hair and piercings and all this sort of thing. And, uh, and the fact is, the vast majority of our young people in America aren't too much different than we were. Most of them are being raised pretty decent. Most of them, you know, appreciate what we got for home. Things are different. We will all say, well, this generation doesn't understand. But I will tell you that of the 452 young men and women that passed through our gates this year, I'm proud of them. And um, I, I, I think they're a positive reflection of our country, of the Commonwealth, and of the history and traditions of military cadetting of all institutions. And uh, I give you a standing invitation. If you'd like to come out, I'd love to have you come out as a group sometime. Uh, next time you have a reunion, you know, do it at my place. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to have you come out. Uh, you have a standing invitation, come, come home. For those of you that were cadets at MMI, and, and for those of you that know cadets from MMI, uh, you more than, uh, feel more than welcome to, uh, to come back and, and take a visit. I'd be glad to give you a walk around. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Cool. Thank you.